What's going on everyone? DSP here and welcome to another edition of the Hateful Truth Game Review Series. I'm Dark Side Phil and uh, I kind of got a lot to say, a lot, a lot to say. I kind of have a lot to say about the game that I'm going to review today and it needs to be mentioned that this game is a re-release. It is not a game that is brand new. This game actually originally was released in 2007 for the Nintendo Wii and at the time, it was a Wii exclusive release. It became a cult classic. A lot of, uh, had a hardcore fan base. Ended up getting a sequel, and so finally, the makers of the game said, "Listen, we should port this game to other consoles." They're unlike in 2007 when only the Wii had motion controls. Well, now almost all the major consoles are getting them, including PlayStation. And so they decided they were going to port this game for the PlayStation 3 using the PS Move controls. Now, if you don't know what I'm getting at yet, I am talking about the game, cult classic, re-release, No More Heroes, Heroes Paradise for the PlayStation 3. I just completed the game five minutes ago, not even kidding. And uh, so it's fresh in my mind. I have a lot to say. Now, I do fair and balanced and honest reviews of games, okay? And I score them on a scale of 1 to 10. It's hard for me to rate this game fairly because, really... If you're going to review No More Heroes, you should review No More Heroes for the Wii, because that's the real version of the game. This was an HD re-release. Now, I never played the original No More Heroes, so it's hard for me to review a game like this, because I don't never played the original, and I can't say if this is better or worse than what originally came on the Wii. All I can base this off of is my personal experience playing this game for the PlayStation 3, and also what my fans have been telling me as they've been watching my playthrough of this game, and some of the frustrations that I've had. And when you're saying, gee, Phil, well, I didn't watch your playthrough. What frustrations are you talking about? I'm talking about this, okay? Motion controls and the whole idea and the gimmick behind them, and I've been a staunch uh, critic of these motion controls. Not just PS Move, not just Kinect, not just the Wii. Ever since, all of a sudden, there was a fad when the Wii came out that everyone wants to use motion controls for their games. I have no problem with the gamepad. I love playing with the gamepad. What's wrong with the PlayStation 3 pad? What's wrong with the Xbox pad? What's wrong with the traditional Nintendo pad? I actually think the original Nintendo NES pad controls better than this fucking piece of shit, okay? And not to say that motion controls don't have their uses. There are certain games like rail shooter games. Uh, I played Dead Space Extraction earlier this year. I thought these worked outstanding for that style of game. Any game that needs a lot of pointing and things like that, perfect for that, okay? But when it comes to games like this, a hardcore game that this game is actually almost 20 hours long, uh, depending on what you do if you do all the side missions and you unlock everything, you don't need this. This gimmick is not needed, okay? The game is good enough on its own to be a good game. You don't need motion controls. Now, what I want to let everyone know, uh, when I played this game, I did use the PS Move motion controls, and we're going to talk a little bit about the frustrations I had with it. But I do want to let everyone know, yes, you can play this on the regular PlayStation 3 DualShock pad. So if you don't have the PS Move, if you're not interested in bullshit motion controls, yes, you can still play and enjoy No 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 More Heroes on your PlayStation 3. So don't let this be a detriment to you if you like the game or you like the gameplay, what it looks like. There's no reason that you shouldn't get the game because you're afraid of this. You can play it on a regular gamepad. And from what everyone's been telling me watching my playthrough, people have been playing this on PlayStation 3 on the pad, and it seems to work fine. There's no control issues whatsoever. But now let's get to the point. My first point about this game. I wanted to play this on the PlayStation Move because on the Wii you use motion controls, so it makes sense. I want to try to get an original feel of what the game was like on the Wii. And so I started using them and immediately found problems with the control. There's an ability in this game, your name is Travis Touchdown, and in a nutshell, here's the story of the game. You're an assassin, you're trying to kill the top ten assassins so you can become ranked number one. That's really it, and there are twists and turns and different characters and things that are very interesting, but that being said, there's not a lot to the story of this game. It's more about the gameplay, the graphic design, the quirkiness of it, etc. So I wanted to recreate the, the experience for the Wii, and some problems that I have. Number one, this thing does not do a lot of the motions that the game actually wants you to do. So for example, to recharge your, your beam katana, it has batteries inside of it, and they want you to shake this like you're shaking a flashlight. You know how you have those rechargeable flashlights? All you do is shake them like this, and you, they, they recharge themselves. They're self-power generating. Uh, and the, the pun in the game is that you're jerking off when you're doing it, because when he does it, he actually goes like this with his katana, like he's jerking off a dick. So it's supposed to be that motion. 
Well, guess what? I think I know that motion. I'm a guy, okay? I think most guys are pretty understanding of how that motion works. It doesn't work with this fucking thing, okay? You go like this, and nothing happens. And you're like, what's going on? And you see your energy bar going, oh. Uh, uh, it's supposed to be going boy 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 and recharging instead it crawls slowly uh, 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 uh. and you're like what the fuck this doesn't work and there are many times in the game when the game wants you to not just do like side to side seems to work flicking the controller like this seems to work 90% of the time I'd say there are a couple times when I was doing it and it didn't work but I almost never got this to work properly and I don't know if it's it's the motion sensor inside the controller if it's the camera reading this, I don't know what it is, but for whatever reason, it just didn't work very good. And because of that, a lot of the battles in this game became extremely hard for me because the beam katana loses its charge after you block or use certain attacks, and it will keep running out, and you're, you're completely vulnerable. So I try to charge it, I gotta hurry up in a moment, I have to charge it, and it won't charge, and then I'm dead. And it's really fucking frustrating that because of something so stupid like that, that, you know, I was dying left and right, especially to bosses that otherwise probably wouldn't have been very hard. Um, also, there is a dodge mechanic in this game where you're supposed to you hold down a trigger button to lock on your opponent, and then you're supposed to flick this left or right to get your guy to roll left or right. Now, I think I'm a staunch supporter of have a dodge be a button, okay? Because when you're in the heat of the moment, and if this doesn't register your dodge, and if that could make or break the entire fight and actually end the game for you, it needs to fucking work. And unfortunately, they didn't go that way with this game. It's this flicking motion and. 90% of the time when I tried to dodge, he would not go in the direction I wanted. I would go forward. He never dodged forward ever in the game, so I don't even know if you can dodge forward. But I tried dodging left, dodging right, dodging back. Doesn't matter what direction I pushed, the game would randomly choose one. It wouldn't matter what I was doing, I was going some weird place. And sometimes it ended up being really frustrating because I ended up rolling myself into a corner, and now the camera got stuck in the corner and I couldn't see what the hell was going on. This happened several times in the game, not only in boss battles, but also just fighting normal enemies. So it was really fucking frustrating. Really, the only motion control that you really that's really effectively used in this game is if you're attacking high, you hold it up like this. If you're attacking a low attack, you go like this. And that's really it. It's not needed. To actually attack, you don't go like this to swing your katana. You mash a button. And speaking of that, even that doesn't always work. Sometimes you'll be mashing the button to attack, and your guy will start charging an attack, which is supposed to be when you hold the button down. So even then, even just pressing the button doesn't even fucking work properly with this game. So I don't know what they were thinking. I mean, I understand, okay, we want to re-release this game for PlayStation 3, open it up to a new audience, and since PlayStation 3 has motion controls, we want to design it to work with them. So why didn't you? Because this game does not work properly with these controls. It just does not work properly. It's very frustrating. It's inaccurate. You're going to have lots and lots of problems if you try to play this game with the PS Move. So my honest recommendation, even though I haven't even played the game on a gamepad, don't play this game on the Move. If you're going to play it on PS3, play it on gamepad. Save yourself many cheap and bullshit deaths and lots of the frustration that I had during my playthrough. Okay? So I'm done now you know, ranting about motion controls. Now what I want to do, I actually want to focus on the game itself, okay? I want to talk about the stuff that I like, the stuff that I dislike, and some really odd things that I found were very, just not acceptable for a game that's been out for four years and is now being re-released in high definition, okay? So what I did like about this game, I thought the combat was neat, being able to level up the power of your weapon, getting new, uh, more powerful katanas that actually look different on your screen. Um, being able to unlock larger combos, being able to unlock special grapple moves, wrestling moves. Really neat. The combat, I think, is really where this game shines. I think the combat is, is very interesting, even though it can be repetitive. The game does a good job of mixing it up with different kinds of enemies, and the boss battles are all unique. Um, so I have to say, the combat is where it's at for this game. That's where the, the good chunk of the game is. And then also, I'd have to say, the design of the game, the quirkiness of the game, the studio is Suda51, who also made Shadows of the Damned earlier this year. So it's in that same kind of vein of a tongue-in-cheek like kind of humor, some kind of, you know, it's a mature-rated game, don't get me wrong. They're swearing and everything in the game. There's, you know, jokes about jerk jerks. Jerks about joking off, I almost said that. Jokes about jerking off, sexual humor, all kinds of stuff. You're lusting over hot women for most of the game. So it's going to have that kind of humor, and if you like that, you'll like this game. If you don't like that, you're probably going to want to skip this one. You're going to think it sucks, okay? So, those are the things that I really liked about the game, okay? And the graphics, too. I have to say, the graphics, this game looks very pretty in HD. I think this game needed this, this HD facelift, because I'll be honest, I, I've played games on the Wii. I've never played this game, 
but some of the games on the Wii are screaming for HD graphics. I mean, for example, Metroid Other M, that game fucking would have been amazing with HD graphics, but, you know, being that it's on the Wii, and it's a Wii exclusive, it has to go with the low-res graphics. Um, so I do like that as well, the graphical design. Now, the things I don't like about this game, and then the things that are really odd for a re-release. Okay, number one, the gameplay, which is basically go through a stage, fight a bunch of, of minions, and then get to the boss, and fight the boss, and kill the boss, wash, rinse, repeat, is broken up in between by missions where your goal is to raise money to actually pay to go to fight the next boss. That's right, you can't just go from stage to stage like this is Mega Man. No, instead you have to raise funds in between stages to unlock the next stage. And if there were fun things that you could do to raise money in this game, I don't think this would be a problem. The problem is the game throws at you a bunch of menial, trivial, boring, repetitive tasks to unlock money. So for example, pick trash up off the ground, fill cars up with gasoline at the gas station. What the fuck does that have to do with this game? Nothing. And it actually slows the game down to a crawl in between some of these stages when you have to stop and for an hour you have to go do menial, menial, trivial, bullshit tasks to raise enough money to get to the next stage. I have no idea why that's in the game. It makes no fucking sense. It actually kind of gives the game an excuse to have an open world environment because it does. Similar to Grand Theft Auto, it has an open world environment and you have a motorcycle that you drive around the city to get from job to job to raise money and it's boring. It's fucking boring. After you do this the tenth time, you're like, I'm so fucking bored of this. I don't want to do these stupid jobs. And then, by the way, when you do the jobs well, you unlock assassination missions, which are basically just timed stages of like three minutes or less where you have to kill a bunch of enemies and survive, okay? So, it's just grinding. It's, it's, finding, it's actually grinding in an action-oriented game. And I just, I question why that's in the game. I question why they thought that was a good idea. It kind of makes the game look bad, because when you're driving around this, this city, you're like, man, I kind of wish I was playing Grand Theft Auto right now, because there's many games in Grand Theft Auto, like the racing, uh, you know, the stunts, all the stuff in that, are infinitely better than the th stupid, trivial shit they're having me do in this game. And it kind of feels like a Grand Theft Auto wannabe during those parts of the game. So, I really think that's a detriment to the game, I don't think those things should have ever been in the game. Some other problems with this game. For a game that's four years old and has an HD re-release, you would think this game would be polished, spiffy. They want to make sure that this game is like the perfect version, like the director's cut. This game feels like it's a beta in a lot of parts. It really does. There are so many fucking game bugs in this game. Just the driving of the motorcycle feels very awkward. Doesn't feel like any other game you've played. It feels cartoonish and the controls are just very inaccurate when you're driving around the city doing that kind of stuff. Um, weird graphical bugs. Sometimes your beam katana won't even load on the screen, so you're fighting with absolutely nothing, which looks fucking ridiculous. Um, just really uh, audio bugs. There's audio bugs in this game. When you're driving through the city, all of a sudden, the audio will start to cut out every once in a while, or the music will go uh, 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 and skip, and you're like, what the fuck? Like, did they test this game? What is going on with this game? It's very odd. Uh, and even some of the boss fights are very, I'd have to say, just annoyingly designed to the point where if this is a, a collector's edition, if this is a director's cut, a remastered version of the game, you'd think they would have improved the combat. But some of the bosses literally have attacks that you can't hit them during, okay? And so you would think, okay, this boss has a pattern. I have to dodge when they do that attack, then I have to attack afterwards or counterattack or punish that attack. There are bosses that just stand there and just say, Invincible attack, invincible attack, invincible attack, invincible attack. And you're, you spend up, you end up wasting five minutes waiting for an opening to hit the fucking boss. And you're like, what the fuck is going on? Like, what were they thinking when they designed these boss fights? And in addition to that, now I did play on the mild level difficulty, which I thought was supposed to be normal. I was wrong. Apparently, there's two levels of difficulty, sweet and mild. If you play this game on sweet, apparently it's a lot better uh, because the combat's easier, you auto-block uh, when you're standing still, and it's the bosses don't do a lot of the, the unpunishable repetitive attacks. They actually are easier to kill and they have less life. So, for me, I put it on mild because it's when it says mild, I'm thinking, okay, this is normal. It's actually hard mode of the game. So basically, I beat this game on hard mode, okay? And some of the bosses are retardedly difficult. 
to the point where it's just the way they're designed. It's not even, it wasn't even at some points this, it was actually the boss fights themselves. You know, this girl, I forget her name, I think Holly Summers, stands there like this and shoots 20 fucking heat-seeking missiles out of her body, and you're supposed to strafe around the screen and dodge them. So I would, but then sometimes, she'd launch them again, and then sometimes, she'd launch them again. So it's like, what, where is my opportunity to attack? It's so frustrating, and in addition to that, the bosses have way too much light. There are some boss fights in this game that take up to 15 to 20 minutes to beat the boss. And I'm not kidding. Now, sure, if you master the fight and you understand every single thing to do to counterattack, you could beat it a lot quicker. But on the first run through of the game, you're going to be frustrated playing these bosses unless you're playing it on the sweet difficulty. So again, I recommend unless you're hardcore and you really want to challenge, play this game on the sweet difficulty, not the mild difficulty because it's just really fucking hard. Um, and then to, on top of all that, some of these bosses have instant kill moves, meaning you can have a completely full life bar, and the boss walks up to you and goes, DINK! And you die instantly, and the whole fight starts from the beginning. And you're like, for a game, I could see if this was a, a quick boss fight that's a two-minute boss fight. Okay, the boss can instantly kill me, because I could just retry again and beat him quickly. But not when I just grinded 15, 20 minutes of combat into this boss. They're about to die, and they go, DINK! And I just die instantly and have to start over. That's bullshit. That's horrendous game design. That's something that belongs back in the fucking 1980s with the Atari and NES games. It doesn't belong in a modern generation game. That was a horrible choice by them. Horrible, horrible choice. It's basically a beginner's trap because unless you're cheating, meaning you know you watch someone play the game already or you have a strategy guy, you would never know those are instant kill moves. And some of them are just complete bullshit. Like when I was fighting the final boss, I won't spoil who it is, but this boss has an attack that charges up, and then it goes full screen. And during the dash of this attack, you have to dodge it. If you don't dodge it, you die instantly. You get stabbed, and you're dead, okay? Now, the other thing is, even if the attack misses you, if you accidentally walk up during the state where you're supposed to be able to punish the boss, and, pu and you know, hit them with a couple hits because they missed, if you accidentally touch the hand of the boss during your attack, you die instantly. It acts as if the attack hit you, which is complete and utter fucking nonsense. It's just bad hit detection, and it's, it's a horrible thing to have in a game like this because, again, I can understand if you have a long boss fight, and you're like, oh, I finally beat him. It's rewarding to me. But not when you can instantly fucking die and have to replay 15 minutes of gameplay. That's not acceptable. And... These are the kinds of things that in a game like this that had four years to think about what could we have improved when we do this HD re-release, they did nothing. There's really no improvements. They, uh, this is kind of the kind of stuff that is like amateurish. And I, during me, my gameplay, I kept saying amateur night. I said it a lot, amateur night. These guys who designed this game are amateurs because these are things that we've abandoned in this kind of game ten years ago. Cheap instant deaths because we know they don't belong in there. So what the fuck were they thinking leaving that kind of shit in there? And then there's just some other parts that just make no sense. There's a racing stage that's like a four or five minute long racing stage. And at the end, all of a sudden, even though you've been using these controls to drive your motorcycle through the racing stage for ten, five, ten minutes, they have this little mini part where you have to tap a button, hold a button, and then jump. And if you don't do it perfectly, you die instantly, and you have to replay the entire racing stage. Another seven minute. I had to replay the stage four fucking times before I figured out exactly what they were trying to tell me to do so that I could pass it. What the fuck? How, again, no checkpoints? It's 2011 and you can't put checkpoints in your video game yet? This shit makes no sense. So, despite the fact that this kind of soured me to the game, there were still a lot of really odd problems with this game that I don't understand why they wouldn't have fixed them in a re-release. It really just boggles my mind. You have four years to find the things that people don't like or things that are annoying or things that are cheap about your game and improve the game and instead you completely ignore them all. Now I don't know maybe the original No More Heroes had 42 more game bugs that aren't in this game and they, they fixed them I don't know but it's kind of ridiculous that those things and those annoying gameplay practices and those annoying game bugs and graphical bugs are in this game. They don't belong to be in a re-released game. I just don't understand that. So for what it is, No More Heroes, Heroes Paradise, there is the, the one thing I do want to mention, the one thing that they did add into this game, apparently, that wasn't in the original Wii release, is you actually can fight all of the bosses from No More Heroes 2. Whenever you save your game at your home base, which is your hotel room, um, you can actually fall asleep, per se, and then you go into a dream cage fight 
with the bosses from No More Heroes 2. And I fought a couple of them. I killed one, then the second one was super cheap and killed me, and I said, fuck this, I don't want to do it anymore, I don't see the point. And there really is no point, because apparently you don't get anything for doing it, it's just trophies, you know, when you fight the bosses, so. Um, so that is the one thing they really did add into the game that wasn't in the original game. So if you're a fan of the original game, you have a PlayStation 3, you feel like replaying it, and having some cool Easter eggs, like the, the bosses from No More Heroes 2, that's cool. But besides that... I'm not so sure what the hell they, they did with the four years that they had to develop this game and make it work for the PlayStation 3. In my honest opinion, I think it was lazy game development. I think they said, eh, we already got good, good uh, you know, popular opinion. There was a cult following for the first game. Who cares if there were bugs in it? Just leave them. Just, just, ship, just put it in HD and fucking somehow make it work half-assed with this. And just go fucking sell it. Just sell it. Don't put any effort into the development of the game. Just fucking sell it. And that's disappointing because this game could have been great. It, like I said, it could have been a director's cut of the game with new content, with better controls, with bugs fixed, with annoying things fixed. And they just completely squandered their opportunity to do that. And I, I'm really disappointed in that because I was really looking forward to this game. And actually, I was so frustrated playing it because of these dumb things that were left in the game that it actually left a sour taste in my mouth for a lot of the game. Okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to rate this game. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rate it as if I never had control problems at all. And then I'm going to give it an honest review with motion controls, okay? So honestly, with motion controls, this game is horrible, okay? The game doesn't control well at all, doesn't lend itself to the PS Move. The PS Move really fails in this game. And if anything, what this has taught me is that this motion controls cannot really be used in a hardcore game because I've been playing this game for three days now. I put 18 hours of gameplay into it. My right arm is fucking killing me. I'm not kidding you. All through my arm, this tendon here, all the way up into my, my uh, bicep, up into my shoulder, are sore as fuck from constantly doing motions with this fucking thing. And it's just not meant to... This kind of game that needs that kind of investment of time... You can't play with motion controls. It's that simple. And this is what people have been saying since this whole motion control gimmick started. Oh, yeah, we're going to make these controls work for all hardcore games. No, you're not, because no one wants to fucking use them. They actually make you sore. You can't sit here for more than an hour at a time playing these games without getting sore. So this is a complete waste of fucking time and effort. Don't play this game on the PS Move. But I have to rate the game honestly. Overall, this game, playing with the PS Move controls, is a 4 point fucking five. It sucks. You don't want to play this game with the PS Move controls. They're horrible. They don't respond. You will die 100,000 times for no fucking reason. And the game's better than that. The game deserves better than to play it with this shit, okay? Now, the game itself, if I take out all control issues, I thought about this hard, and I said, really, honestly, compared to the other games I've played this year, okay, what would I give this game as a rating? And I have to say... I have to give this game a 6.75. Now here's why, okay? I understand it's a cult hit, I understand everyone thought it was one of the best games for the Wii, but that's the Wii. The Wii didn't have a lot of very good hardcore games. You had, what, this, Mad World, and maybe two or three other adult-oriented titles, and everything else is a kiddie game. Now, some people would say, oh, Mario and Zelda aren't kiddie games, but you get my drift. This game is made for adults, and so... That's probably why people loved it so much. You finally had a game that was halfway decent for adults on the Wii. And I can understand why people like this game. Again, the quirkiness, the design, it's made by the studio Suda51. I love their stuff. Uh, and and kind of going in that same vein, let's talk about Shadows of the Dam compared to this. Shadows of the Dam came out this year, also made by Suda51. Very polished, no game bugs that I even ran into. A very complete experience. No problems with controls or anything like that. Very, no, I don't remember any game bugs or glitches or anything like that. Very, very polished experience. That's why I rated it so high. I gave it over an I think I gave it an 8.5, actually. This game is unpolished, feels like a beta in some parts, really had an opportunity to be remade well and get all those problems taken out, and they completely squandered their fucking opportunity and wasted our time. That's why this game is only a 6.75. It's as high as it is because I think the atmosphere of the game, the characters, the story, the bosses are really cool with their design, even though some of them are extremely frustrating to fight. The combat shines really well. The graphics are good. So all of that is a pretty decent game. But I can't give it any higher than a 6.75 because of the problems that exist in this game. I can't imagine what the fuck they were thinking when you have an opportunity like this and you don't fix the game. So... 
No more Heroes Heroes Paradise. It's a decent game. It's worth a playthrough. Not with this fucking bullshit, but expect it to play like a last generation game because that's really what it is. They had a chance to fix these problems. They did not. Shame on them. It's a cash-in game, and that's why it gets a lower score. Okay? So that's it for The Hateful Truth. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you think it was fair that I rated the game separately with the motion controls and then by itself. And I hope you understand the reasons why I review these games as I do. Remember, I do actually rate, honestly, what I think these games were. This game is above average, but not great, and just borderline good, in my opinion, because of the problems that it has. So, maybe they'll really release it again. I actually heard there was another re-release in Japan where they fixed all the problems and, they, and the game plays a lot better. Why the fuck they didn't release that over here, and they released this piece of shit? I have no idea. So... Fuck down, okay? Anyway, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry I'm a little angry that uh, I really wanted this experience to be better and it ended up being really shitty because of the problems with the game. So, anyway, I'm honest. I'm fair and balanced with my reviews and I compare against everything else. I really think that's the, the rating that the game deserves. So there. So I'm DSP. Hope you'll tune in next time for the next episode of the Hateful Truth Game Review Series and I'll see you later.